This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Okay, this video is going to look at some key features in choosing a spinning reel for false albacore fishing. And hey, this is how it's done. This is how I do it. I'm skipping the tin across the surface of the water. Look at that left hand, how fast it's cranking. Um, you can't see the rotor going around because the video speed doesn't pick it up. Yeah, that's full out, full speed, and that fish hit. Okay, now this video was recorded in the fall of 2019, but the reel at the time was a field test. I couldn't talk about it. I'm going to have a lot to say about reel features, but let's watch uh, just a little bit of action first. Oh. All right, I'm going to make a guess where that fish was headed and make a short cast and try to get in front of it. Okay, obviously any reel that you use for this kind of fishing has to have a good drag, and, and that fish showed why. There's plenty of reels on the market um, that have a good drag. What I'm going to show is a Pen Clash 2 4000 HS, and the HS stands for high speed. And uh, yeah, you saw how fast I was cranking. You cannot outreel these fish. They are just too fast. Um, and the faster you reel in this kind of fishing that I'm doing, uh, it almost seems as though the, the more fish you catch, uh, it, you really you cover a lot of water, and they just can't get a good read on the tin when it's skipping across the surface of the water like that. And they explode, uh, like you saw. And uh, yeah, that's the technique. All right, let's do one more and then get to the real video, um, looking at the real features that are important for this. But we can talk about them after we hook up and get a little bit of a run. Okay, I'm making long casts, but because I'm reeling so fast, uh, and I've looked at this on video and timed it, I'm making almost three casts per minute. So imagine you go down the beach and you do this for an hour and don't get any hits. Yeah, there's like 180 casts. Uh, so this can get tiring, especially cranking at top speed. So imagine if uh, you didn't have to crank as hard, as fast, um, to maintain that speed on the tin. That's what this HS, this high-speed model of this reel, allows you to do. Um, and we're going to look at the reel, but on the older Clash, on the original Clash, the 6.2 to 1 gear ratio, each turn of the handle got you 37 inches. That's fast. But this one, each turn of the handle gets you 44 inches of line because the gear ratio is 7.0 to 1. Oh yeah. So it really is a high-speed reel. And uh, you can imagine that, uh, you know what, you don't have to kill yourself to achieve the speed that you want to catch these albies. Uh, there's another feature that's equally important, and that's the oscillation speed of the reel. Okay, if you don't know what oscillation speed is, you're going to see it here. So this is a standard oscillation speed. Look at the speed that the spool goes up and down as I crank. It goes up and down. Now, this is the Pen Clash 2 
and as I reel, crank at the same speed, the spool goes up and down much slower. Now what this does is it gives a more level lay to the line. It's a much smoother lay to the line. Now for pen, the slow oscillation models are the Clash 2 and the Conflict 2. Now let's take a look at retrieve speed. This is the older Clash, 6.2 to 1 gear ratio, and it's a fast reel. 6.2 to 1. It's a pretty fast uh, gear ratio. In fact, Clash 2 does have that speed reel, but they also make an HS model. That's what this is. This is where that rotor is going around seven times for every time you turn that crank and you're picking up 44 inches of line. Hey, notice the, so that gold comes off of a, a pen slammer. I actually bought it separately to put a better handle on the reel. And but now the new Clash 2 comes with that really nice handle. All right, so why do I care about the oscillation speed? Well, I mentioned the smooth line lay. I've also mentioned how many casts you end up making when you do this. If you're down the beach for over three hours, it's very conceivable you could make over 500 casts doing this. Huh. Some of the best fishing, most of the best fishing, it happens in these conditions where you've got some wind. Um, that level line lay really reduces wind knots. Um, you, know, you can make those 500 casts and get zero wind knots. There's quite a difference. I mean, you can still use standard oscillation reels. In my experience, I've done a lot of this kind of albi casting. That slow oscillation with the level line lay um, just keeps the braid much more friendlier when you're just making hundreds and hundreds of casts. You saw the reel get splashed there. Well, I can tell you, I fish much rougher days than this, and those clash reels get splashed a lot, and they hold up fine. That is not a reel that I would be dunking and using in heavy surf, but for these kinds of conditions and, and a little bit rougher than this, um, yeah, they're fine, and, and they hold up well. So back to the oscillation speed. If the slow is so good with the line lay and the braid friendliness, why have a standard oscillation? Uh, and it's because that standard oscillation, the little bit faster speed of the spool going up and down, gives like a somewhat of a crisscross pattern slightly on the spool, and that allows one to apply a lot of drag pressure, pressure without any worry that the braid is going to cut into the spool. Now, I could tell you, I, like I said, I've done a lot of this. I use a very tight drag, as tight as I can go without having to um, worry that I'm going to break the line. And, uh, and it shows because I get these fish in relatively quickly when I release them, they take off in good shape. I've never, ever had an issue with braid cutting into the spool. What's important, and this is always important no matter what kind of reel that you're using, uh, when you spool braid on, you have to do it under pressure. You have to put a lot of pressure on it, keep it tight on the spool, and then um, you're not going to run into an issue with the line cutting into the spool. Now, I talk about pen reels here because that's what I know, that's what I have. Um, I don't care what brand that you use, but if you're going to be doing this kind of fishing, I'd be looking at the gear ratio, and most importantly, right, like these are 4,000 size reels. What you really want to be looking at is how many inches per turn that you're going to bring in line. And uh, for I'll be fishing, geez, I really wouldn't want to go below like 35 inches per turn and uh, this is just beautiful being able to pull 44 inches per turn because uh, you don't have to knock yourself out to get that fast speed um, and then yeah uh, also look at the oscillation speed of the reel because that's going to allow you to make a lot of casts and uh, not have line problems
And when choosing wine for doing this, uh, I think you definitely want to go with an eight strand, a smooth eight strand braid. Uh, for a few years, uh, I used the Daiwa J Braid 8, excellent wine. This happens to be spooled with uh, the Berkeley X9. It's the same stuff that I use for fluke fishing. And I was a little hesitant to move off that J Braid because it works so well. But um, so far, and you know, this is just one spool that I've used so far um, with the X9 20 pound test, it's been very good and it casts just great. So, uh, yep, just keep that in mind uh, a smooth eight strand braid. And very important to have that fluorocarbon leader on there, uh, at least three feet. Uh, I'm almost superstitious that I use nothing but Seaguar Blue for that, so I use a 20 pound Seaguar Blue fluorocarbon and uh, works great handles any kind of abrasion resistance and yeah it, it just catches tremendously and rods between seven and eight feet seem right for this uh, seven and a half seems to be just about perfect uh, you get a nice long cast uh, you can put a lot of pressure on the fish and uh, kind of acts like a shock absorber because if you've caught these things you know they change direction and do things very quickly and sometimes it can be hard with a seven footer to keep uh, pressure applied and and just even that extra half a foot of rod kind of absorbs a lot of that darting around that these fish do. Okay, so you've been seeing Albies. Uh, hey, this next one's not going to be an Albie. And heh, despite having caught well more than a thousand Albies off the beach, what you're going to see here is a first for me. All right, so I ho hope you found this helpful. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. what we call up here a green bonito and uh, they're delicious if you can bleed it out and put it on ice and I don't have ice available so off he goes it's a bonito bonito yeah <laughs>